Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I had such a busy week last week and the week before because I had to finish a huge assignment that was due for university. Um, because of that, I was all over the show and I completely forgot to actually edit in my deck guide section where I described the cards in my previous Northern Realm video. <laughs> So I'm really sorry for that. I'm going to give you that section now. It was recorded a few days ago. Again, the deck is really nice and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll bring out a Skelliger deck guide very soon. And spoiler alert, I recorded that video on the same day and I actually forgot to press the record button and only noticed it afterwards. So, so this is a very straightforward deck and relies on several archetypes in order to win. The first one is of course that of mages. Now the fun thing about mages is the fact that you can get some significant carryover value with them. That's if you combine them with something like Shani. So here we have the Banart student that has to be played on the melee row. <clears throat> it has patience, meaning every turn you don't use it, it will increase the amount it will damage by an enemy unit. Then we also have two Aratiza students, personally one of my favorite cards of this expansion. This one does the opposite of the Banart student, it's played on the range row and it boosts an allied unit by every turn you haven't used it yet. So essentially the longer you keep it on the board, the more patience you have, the more it will pay off if it survives. So what I tend to do in round 1 is, I try to play as many of these as I can and I don't use a single one of them. Then when I'm about to pass, I might use about 3 of them and leave one on the board to continue ticking. The reason for this is that they go very well with Shani. Now, Shani has zeal and it summons a bronze human unit from your graveyard to this row. So she can be used more than once if you're going to be playing a long round because she has cooldown 7. Of course, you can also play other cards on her that can reduce the cooldown if you would wish to do so. So with Shani, you just have to decide which mage is the biggest, the one that's in your graveyard that is. If it's a Banart student, you will play Shani on the melee row in round 2 or 3. And if it's a Arthusa student, you will play her on the range row in round 2 or 3. She's a very nice and you can get some significant carry over by using this combination. Then of course we have Garart of Ale. Now Garart is quite a nice card. He has patience as well, but a lot of the times you will use him off the bat because he is just worth so much that you can't really afford for him to die before you used him. He will create and play a 4 provision spell. Now, normally the 4 provision spells that you will be drawing is that of Pact, which boosts a unit by 6. This is normally the one you're going to go with. But, if you are assured that he isn't going to die, you will keep him on the board for 1 turn as he does have patience, so that this increases to a 5 provision spell. Now a 5 provision spell is quite nice because sometimes you'll get something like artifact compression which resets a tall enemy unit and locks it. Or my favorite would be something like casting contest. Now this comes in very handy if your patience has paid off. If you have something like 5 points sitting in a Banart student Casting Contest will boost it by 5 and will reset the order ability. So essentially you can use your Banart student, use Casting Contest on him and then use him again. So that will be 5 damage plus another 5 damage and boost it by 5. So this is a pretty nice combination to have. And just remember Casting Contest cannot be pulled with Jonatalus because Jonatalus only plays warfare cards and Casting Contest is a spell. Alright, so that is your first combo and they normally go down very well, especially if they aren't all killed right after you play them. We also have a lot, another little card here which is the Sunset Wanderers. Now the Sunset Wanderers is a nice little bit of tempo that you can afford to include in this sort of deck. This card grows by one every time it moves to the right in your hand, after every turn it will move to the right in your hand. When it reaches the most right position in your hand, if you continue to play that turn and you don't pass, it will pop out of your hand onto the board and you'll draw another card. So this is just a very nice tempo card and normally you include this in a deck if you can manipulate it. With manipulate I mean if you can keep it in your hand a little bit longer. 
So with our current leader ability, that is a possibility. With Pinsir Maneuver, you will draw a Northern Realms card of your choice. So if you missed anything, you, you're guaranteed to draw at least two of your cards. And then you shuffle a card back into your deck. So this is very nice because when you draw a card, it comes from the right side into your hand. Now the Sunset Wanderers goes from left to right. So that means you essentially add one more turn for that Sunset Wanderer to go to the right side of the board. Because it has to pass every card in your hand. So you can manipulate this and um, make it go uh, two turns longer before it pops out onto the board. Then we have Hubert. Now Hubert is very nice. Whenever you use an order ability while this card is in your deck, it will remove a counter. And currently Hubert has a counter of 10. Meaning if you've used 10 order abilities, Hubert will pop out of your deck onto the board. Just another nice bit of tempo and a bit of thinning. So remember that your leader ability is also an order, which counts as two orders. Okay, and now for our other combo, and that is Siege. Now, if you can play Siege in a short round two, or perhaps even a long round three, it's normally a very good sign for you, because you can either bleed your enemy, or you can just make use of engines a lot longer. So with Siege, you trigger the artifact every time you play a Siege engine. Um, and then we have a bunch of siege engines that we can pull out with cards like Amphibious Assault or even with our leader ability. So the strongest siege engine we have is War Chariot. War Chariot, if played on the melee row, gives bleeding for four turns to an enemy unit. You can use this again because it has a cooldown of three, so this makes for a very nice engine. If you need to, you can also play it in the range row and it will move an enemy unit to a different row. So if you have crew, meaning if you play this card in between two soldiers, you'll have both order abilities. So you'll be able to move an enemy unit and give it bleeding at the same time. All right, and then we have one single siege tower. I couldn't really find better value for five provisions, but if you do, you're more than welcome to replace the siege tower or something else. It is a siege engine, meaning it will proc your uh, artifacts and that's essentially what you want. We also have two Reinforced Ballista, they're very good cards because they damage a unit by one every turn. And if you play a, a card that is a warfare card, like that of Boiling Oil, it will trigger the card and you'll be able to use it more than once in a single turn. Boiling Oil damages an enemy by five and it can be pulled out with a card like John Natalis. Alright, and then we also have more warfare cards like that of Bombardment. Now, Bombardment is pretty nice because you're able to damage four enemy units at random, but it's also increased by one for every siege engine you control. So the more siege engines you have on the board, the more astronomical amount of damage you can do in one turn. This is obviously a very nice card and it's definitely one you should keep in this deck. We also have two Ballistas just to increase that amount of Bombardment damage. And then lastly, we have a Siege Ladder, which is also a Siege Engine. So this also has crew, meaning if you play it between two soldiers, it will boost the enemy, uh, the card you move by two points, not the enemy card. Now here we have Siege Ladder. This also has crew, which means that if you play this card between two soldiers, the card you move will be boosted by two points. Now, the reason we have this is not only because it's a Siege Engine, meaning it will proc your artifact, it's also very nice in case your enemy decides to move one of your students. Because Shani makes it possible to have quite a bit of carryover value, if someone decides to move something like a Barnard student into the range row, you won't be able to use it anymore. And sometimes you really need to. So this just gives it a uh, another chance at uh, killing an enemy unit. Now, Siege Ladder can also be used on other cards that are row locked. Of course, cards like your uh, Trebuchet. So the Trebuchet also needs to be in the range row. And if you have no other targets, you can use it on the Battering Ram. The Battering Ram has a cooldown of two. It starts in the range row and it moves south to the melee row. Then it damages the highest enemy unit by three. So firstly, it has to go back to the range row again after two turns and then go back to the melee row after another two turns. So if you want to make this process a little bit quicker, you can move it to the melee row um, and damage an enemy. And then you can move it back with your siege ladder 
and then when you get it uh, down to cooldown zero, you can move it with the order ability again to the melee row and damage an enemy unit. But anyway, that is enough of me. I hope you guys enjoy this deck. Uh, I've been climbing quite a lot with it the past few days. And yeah, I will see you soon with another deck guide.